This is my friend, Melissa. Hey everybody. I actually, the camera's right there. I actually met Melissa over a year ago. Yes. Because you fly EMT, you're, um, what's your title again? I'm a flight paramedic. Yes, flight paramedic, which means it takes her all across the US, all across the world. And she was in Sacramento last year, October. I know, of all places, she ended up at Sidetracks, and I met her just because she was there, and somehow club, uh, nightclub came up, and she showed her tattoo, which I know it's backwards, so I apologize. And I showed her my, I have my no hate tattoo, and uh, we made plans earlier this year for me to fly out here to be in Orlando, and so she promised she would take me to the club where it all happened. So as we're walking up to this, Melissa, talk about, before you share your story of that night, talk about what we're gonna see here. So basically what you're seeing is the club um, as it was that night. Um, nothing's changed except for the memorials have been cleaned up and stuff redone, as you can see in the background. Um, everybody's left their People from all over, different countries, um, all over the world have come and left little messages of how they feel um, about what happened here. Um, this club was, as you see it, was like our safe place here in Orlando. It was a place that you could come and be whoever you were, whether you were gay, you were straight, you were transgender, um, whether you just didn't know what you were, you could come here and feel like a family. And so this was our little safe haven. That just on 612 got completely wiped away. And, um, and you were supposed to be there that night, weren't you? Actually, I came. Um, I got called in for a flight and left. I was supposed to meet a, a really good friend of mine. This was someplace we came and spent a lot of time together. And uh, I got here, ordered a beer, um, got called out, and uh, called my friend and told her that I was going to be able to meet with her and that I would see her tomorrow and that it was really late and that maybe we should just meet tomorrow. And um, I wasn't sure at the time whether or not she listened to me. I, don't, I didn't know if she went back to Merritt Island. Um, it took me till five o'clock the next day um, to find out that she was safe and she was not part of the, the massacre, that she wasn't, she wasn't here. Um, and it was, it was heartbreaking. She, um, she's uh, close and near and dear to my, my heart. So um, it, it was, it was, I can't even explain the feeling that we all had. I think we were all in shock. Um, we were just in shock. I left 15 minutes before he walked into this place. Are you serious? 15 okay, minutes. that I didn't know. Yeah, 15 minutes I walked out. And um, so um, 15 minutes before he came in that door. So I would not have met my grandson. Um, my life would probably have not. I wouldn't be here today. Um, you know, I don't know what would have happened. Um, I'm a first responder, so I, I my instant reaction would have been to, to not run away necessarily. I don't think it would have been very well for me. Yeah, something tells me you would have stayed in the house. I wouldn't have. If you had not been, you know, one of the victims. They would have had to take me out. You better take me out first. <laughs> I have to admit, I know this is emotional for you. I'm just, I feel this well. I feel right here. I feel this swell of, of crazy, empathic, sympathetic energy right it's now. Funny. Sorry. Oh, honey. So how about we do this? Let's go and check out. There's a lot of memorials here, people. I'm gonna take the camera and walk around it, and maybe a. It's actually been changed a lot. Um, there's a museum that all of this stuff goes is going to be moved to and is being moved to. Um, so all the crosses you guys saw that the man who built, who also took them out to Vegas, um, who had everybody's name on them, um, those are also in a different part of Orlando over near the Science Center. And um, that is like a, almost like a time capsule, if you will. Okay. Um, there's been no definitive decisions on how this building and what's going to happen, except for that it will be some type of memorial. Um, there is a committee that is making those decisions. Um, we do believe that um, that she will be, the owner will be opening another club, obviously not here. Um, this club for you that 
didn't know was in her brother's, um, this was a memorial for her brother who died of HIV AIDS. And so it was very important to her family that this club goes on. Maybe not at this location, but um, you know, you know, not right. here, but that there's a memorial here. So that's the history of, of Paul's club, is yeah. it was for her brother. Yeah. Wow, I just learned something else now. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, so I'm like, actually, I can turn this around. I didn't forgot. So here we are, cold pulse. And then as I walk and show this, I mean, check this out. Obviously, right? Look at all these signatures. Some of these have been worn away over time. You can see this must have been here maybe even a year ago. This and is this original tarp that was put up a year ago. The original so, tarp? Yeah, so this is all, all these, everybody's been writing. There's markers up here that you can see. And if they didn't write on this, they've they've written on the uh, On parking. the asphalt, right? Yeah, on the asphalt and on the parking. I mean, this is just intense. I feel so sad and full of love at the same time. I'll share some pictures of right after. This whole entire parking lot was filled with candles of everybody who lit candles. I have a picture of, of me right after coming down and lighting a candle and everybody was out here. Even our homeless population was trying to keep the candles lit. There were really? lighters out here and they would come by and they would light the, light, the candles that had blown out. Wow. And look at these plants. Look at these plants. There's a plant for everyone who lost their life. My guess, in a way for life to go on. There's 49 plants and they're in planters that are of the rainbow. This is incredible. This is just ginormous. Some of this stuff has been here since the beginning. It's, um, it's, it's amazing to me that it's been almost 18 months and this is still like it is, like it's still been preserved. And this one is huge right here. Well, so they're random acts of kindness. This is what people do. They'll put one, they'll put one up and this one is leave a quarter in the parking meter. <laughs> so there's different little ones, call your mom, different things to, to do. I should take one. Yeah. Let me take one. Purple is my color. Let me find a purple one. And this one. Oh my. Call my mom. <laughs> is that going to make me cry now or what? For everyone who knows what I just went through with my mom. Absolutely, Alicia. I knew when I came to Orlando, this was definitely somewhere I had to be. Right there. The lives that were lost. The photos are here. Permanent flowers are here. There's a map of Orlando. So the, the heart that I hung on your water bottle, these kids, after after we, uh, after the massacre, they, um, they, these little kids started making these hearts and they gave them to everyone um, in the parades. And it was just about having how, giving a heart and giving a hug and that love was universal. And so these little kids went around Orlando giving these hearts out. Aww. I gave you one of the ones that were given out during the pride parade. And you gave me this too, by the way. Yep. Thank you very much for this. That's the Pulse Foundation. The Pulse Foundation, I have my own now. And the motto, we will not let hate win. So, something I forgot to mention, what happened in Sacramento, oh, where'd it go? Okay, here we go. So, the exact seven days after this massacre, um, there was a preacher at, oh, what was the church? Westboro. Westboro. Westboro, yes, the Westboro Church in Sacramento, there was a preacher who was praising the massacre 
he was recorded from his own people and he had praised his, his not only did he feel that it was justified that these 49 people lost their lives he felt there should have been more and so a very good friend of mine John Hayden an activist himself in our town he got together and created a peaceful rally which he didn't expect to have the response that it did because he really didn't he got into it, he realized the responses were so many that he incorporated um, another friend of ours, and she's on here right now, Beverly, to help him with that because she's had practice with doing um, rallies of this size. And together, they helped coordinate a peaceful rally, which ended up, I think, by the time they came the people that showed up off and on throughout the whole day and the people driving by, I think it was like over 3,000 that showed up in peaceful protest. With signs, with love. I have a video on my Facebook page, actually, about the, kind of the coverage, which I'll share on the bottom of this when we're done with this live feed. And we learned later, because then what? Beverly, you and John came on when I was hosting Soapbox TV, the local TV access, and I, had a, I was one of the hosts. Aww. So I had them on, and we talked about the importance of that. I can put that link there, too. And then I did a podcast with John about it. And we learned after the fact that a lot of his guys were packing heat because they were expecting violence. So they had guns on them. We didn't. We just came in love. And it was an amazing protest um, because we weren't going to put up with that in our town. Right? Right. Right. So I just wanted to share that part because I forgot to share that part. And, th and I shared that with you I did, when right. I met you last year in Sacramento. So I walked in and the first thing I saw was this lady walk up and she had a pole shirt on. I'm like, I'm in Sacramento. Like, this lady has a pole shirt. Like... I was just totally <laughs> taken back. And then I started talking to you, and I thought that was really just crazy. Love is universal. It yes. stretches far and wide. And and uh, it's really, really, really cool. But I do, I think I, I think I told you this, too. That I think that out of all the places, I, I, I came from a small town where, you know, your sexuality mattered. Like, found, somebody found out you were gay. It was like, <laughs> You know, like you see the little ladies sitting at the hairdresser store talking. Did you hear? So when I came here and I moved to Orlando, that, there is none of that. This is one of the nicest communities to live in and accepting. And nobody looks at you if we're walking down and holding hands and we have four or five, six kids or a baby. Nobody looks at you any different. That was the thing that struck me about Orlando. And that really showed when this all happened. I hate that it happened. I, I wish it would have never happened. Um, but out of all the places that it did happen, I have to say that this community rose to that calling, and I don't want to say occasion, but the calling, and they rallied around everybody. And I, the police chief, the everybody. It's It was amazing, the love that this community had for our LGBT community. Angels. Christmas angels, one for every person who lost their life here. I'm not using the V word. I don't like that word. I feel like it makes them sound less than who they were. Look at these. There's a Christmas tree here. A and real live Christmas tree. It's a real life Christmas tree. No one has touched this. Everyone here in town is preserving all of this. This is new. This is a new Christmas tree. They're preserving all of this. Because you know. Did you know anybody who lost their lives? I, I knew a few people. And luckily, I didn't have anybody that was super close to me, but my friends did know people that were super close that they had known for years. So um, I had acquaintances. Um, but I think we all walked away feeling like we knew everybody. Um, the stories that came out of every everything and how you ended up feeling like you knew everybody. Um, they were just no different. It, it sucked the wind out of mostly everybody because never did I have to walk into a club and wonder if I was safe. I never looked for an exit point. And for a good year after we would go and 
I would catch myself looking to see where we could exit in the event that some whack job walked in and decided to start shooting. The funny thing you were talking about packing, a good friend of mine who's a, uh, she used to be a police officer, she, uh, when we met for the peaceful rally downtown, we both walked up and uh, we went to hug each other and we both had, we both were packing and that's what tapped underneath our clothes and we just looked at each other and it was just like that feeling like why don't why are we having to live like this why are we having to walk around the eerie feeling of having an fbi on top of buildings sharpshooters everywhere i mean it was quite it was quite it was quite tense around here for a while um westboro church showed up there was people who were protesting and again i have to say i was so proud because nobody screamed hateful remarks to those people down there screaming they just kept saying we love you we, they chanted nice nice words nothing hate no hate no hate that day and then the fact that you saw that's where the angels came through and all the they made angels that had wings that were huge and somebody sung what you know they would sing louder and louder at the funeral so that nobody could hear um their hateful comments um about how they should have died and all that none of that nobody let that that be heard the message was totally different so if you also look on each one of the murals their names are on there oh yeah they are so where does everybody where does everyone go now well luckily for us here we have lots of venues we have lots of clubs okay so um but this was the special one right this was no different than any place else you know okay. for a long time we all were kind of like why why pulse of like he could have picked the pee house the parliament house and there was probably way more people there than than here, but it was Latin night, you know. It, why? Why? There was probably just, there was probably more straight people than gay people there that night for Latin night for salsa, you know. And there was this was the club you could come to. It didn't matter whether you're what you were, you know. So that's what made this such a, a big touching subject too. This wasn't a gay or straight issue, you know. Like this wasn't about being gay. There was there was just many straight people in this club that night. So, but there's other venues. There's uh, there's there's more than enough places for us to gather. It's just this was a special place. This was one of my favorite places. It was special because it was one of my favorite places. Place that it, we would we would go. I'd like to say there wasn't as much drama here sometimes. And <laughs> yeah, well, some of the girl clubs would get a little more. Well, little trust more drama. me, trust me. <laughs> so, Gay clubs in general will always have drama. But I liked this one because there there really wasn't that aspect. There wasn't a lot of drama. It wasn't a guy club or a girl club. It was just, it was just pulse. This is just wow. All the names. When they did the year, um, when they did the year memorial. I know we've got, I'm going to have to end this video shortly because I guess we're going where there's other murals, you yeah. said? We're going to go see all the other paintings that everybody has. There's just many artists, a lot of talent in this town. And so we're going to go look at some of that and maybe we shoot over some pictures to you guys so you can see Yeah, so what that. I'll have to do is I'll have to do a separate live video. But I wanted to add this. Now that I remember I can turn this around. <laughs> I wanted to show you this memorial of all the rocks, right? So they're in the shape of a heart. And they're all painted on. You can take a look the at this. Side, some of them, but they all have a good meaning. All of these rocks. These all had pictures on them. There was um, pictures of all the vic uh, I hate using the word victim, but all the people. The lives were, lost. Yeah, the lives lost. 
and those were pretty cool. There's a, all of them had messages, and, and people come and bring more and more. I have some in there I saw a few minutes ago. And like then, of course, there. the and sidewalk. This was just done. This was just approved. Yeah, we just did this a couple months ago, I think. So, about the time for Pride, which you missed. I'm going to go ahead and end this particular video, but stay tuned because we will go live again once we get to the other memorials. But this is my first time visiting Club Pulse. Thank you, Melissa, for bringing me here and for sharing your, being courageous and sharing your story. Thanks, Callie, for supporting Orlando. Absolutely. So, see you on the flip side.